Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to read and write to the internal storage of an Android device. But before I do that, I want to show you a demonstration of what it's going to look like before we do this. In the first box, you can type whatever you want, like, John's Android Studio Tutorials are the best. Then all you do is hit save. You can see a little message that says text saved. The file is now saved on this device. We can't see it, but we can hit the read button and we'll read it back. So we can see that John's Android Studio Tutorials are the best has been saved on our device. Well, how did I do that exactly? Let's find out. I use two files here, the activity main, which is the layout, and main activity, which is the class. Let's start with the layout because that's a little easier to understand. I threw on four views. First one is this edit text box, and I changed the idea of it to input field so that we could find it later in our class. Also, I changed the hint to whatever you want, but you could change that to anything you could possibly imagine. I have the single line box ticked, but you could make this a bigger box if you so desire. The next thing I added was a save button. I changed the text of the button to save, and I changed the ID to write button. Kind of invisibly here, you can see this giant text box. Do it on right here, and I gave it the ID of display text. And lastly, I added a read button. All I did here was change the text of the button to read, and the ID to read button. With that out of the way, let's go check out the main activity. This could be difficult to comprehend as it's very complex, but we'll take it line by line and make sure everything's understood. The first thing I did right inside the class declaration, but before our onCreate method is just declare some fields. So the first one we have is our edit text, our button, text view, and then our second button. What is meant by that? Well, if you remember, I have the edit text, the button, the display text field, and the read button. I just gave them a descriptive name so I could remember them later. Then pretty much every activity that you have should have this onCreate method. And inside here I've done a few things. Now don't get too overwhelmed, I'm going to go line by line. You can type it out exactly as I have it. The first one is input field. You can see here, remember it's the first line where we get the text you're using. We're going to set that equal to a find view by ID and we're going to be referencing the input field. So remember there's an ID on this called input field. That's where that's coming from and this is where it's going. We're going to continue and do that same thing for every single one of these. So we come all the way down here to the read button. We're also going to set that equal to a find view by ID, but instead we'll have the ID set to the ID of this button. So this is the read button, which has the read button ID. Now in order to make the buttons do something, which is kind of the whole point here, we have to set on click listens. Basically they listen for a click. We have two buttons, the right button and the read button. We're going to set an on click listener on both of them. When we click the write button, what do we want to happen? We want to write to the file. Well, what do we want to write to the file? Well, instead of typing all that out here, like I could have in this method, I decided it'd be easier if I created a whole new method with just the right file code. So I'm going to come down here and expand this. And this is what happens when we click the write button. So the first thing I did was make a string. That string is the input field. Remember the input field is that first box where the user types in stuff. And we get the text of that. It's going to look a little funny because it's kind of not exactly the text you're thinking it is. But to make it in English or a high level language such as English as opposed to the binary low level languages we need to add the two string method so essentially this part right here is getting the text from that input field that we started with now here's the advanced part you see I have a try a catch and a catch what this does is make it so that we can try this code and if it doesn't work the application will crash which is pretty handy and in case of this code doesn't work, we can catch it. So, for instance, in case we can't find the file that we're trying to open or to write to, we have an exception. Or if another exception occurs, we also have a way to catch that. But anyway, inside this try, we have these lines. These are what's actually writing to the file. So you can see the first thing is the file output stream. You're probably wondering, what is the file output stream? Well, I'm going to tell you. As you know, computers do not speak English, they speak one zero, binary language. And in order for us to communicate that to the computer, it needs to process it through this input stream or output stream. So we're going to create a text file called tutorial file. You can change it to whatever you want, like my file, but just make sure you remember that name. And we're going to set it to private. What it's doing here is it's going to create this file and it's going to open. So now we, or the computer, has this file and it's open, but there's nothing really put in it yet. So that's where we have to go to the second line, which is write. What are we writing? We're writing that string we got, which is the text the user inputted. But since we have to go to the binary language, we're getting the bytes of it and we're writing that to the file. Since this file is just open, we need to close it. Otherwise, the computer will freak out because we have open files that aren't getting closed. 
I just want to make sure the user knows for sure that their text was saved. And if you remember, when we hit the save button, there's a little window, a little box that popped up and it said text saved. All, that, all it's doing is saying the text is saved. That way the user knows that the application would have worked. And the last thing we're going to want to do is change the input field back to nothing so it doesn't say anything. Otherwise, if it didn't work like that, after we type in whatever we want here and hit save, what we had here was, would still be there. And so the user might try to type some more thinking that they're just gonna add this line, but instead they get stuck with this whole thing and they save that and then we get this big old mess. Well, we don't want a big old mess, so we do this. All right, so that section is completed. We have the bracket here and the closing bracket. When that happens in this IDE at least, we can go over here and just minimize that. That way it's out of the way. But we're not quite done yet. Remember, that was just writing to the file. We also need to read from the file. So you can see in our set on click listener, we read from the file and we have this method called read file. So let's open that one up and see what that one's about. This one's even more tricky, but I think we could handle it. So remember, previously we had a file output stream. We took something of English or modern high level language and send it to the computer. Well, we gotta do that again, but we gotta take it from the computer and bring it to English. So we need to open the file where we named our file tutorial file, as you can see right here, but yours could be named something different. Just make sure you call what yours is actually named. We also need an input stream reader. Remember, we need to read back this information in a way that's understandable to us, but currently it's in binary. So it takes this information and it starts processing it. Next, we need the more advanced reader that's going to take that binary and put it into a way where we can start reading it as a string. A string is usually modern characters that we could decipher such as A, B, C, or D. I did create a variable here called lines. It's a string, just represents the lines in the file. This part right here is a little confusing, but it's saying while the lines is equal to the reader dot read line assuming that's not empty we're going to add whatever that line had and then create a new line and then this will keep executing i'll go line by line seeing what's in the, each line of the file and writing it to our string once that's done we can just display that to the big text box right here we're in the big text box is display text so we go display text because we have set that up here set text and string buffer but it's not quite english yet we have to transfer it to english and to string and that part's done. We do have the catch methods. Just in case anything happens, we want to make sure the application can crash. Now with all that in mind, we can go ahead and run the application, and it looks just like this. And you can type whatever you want, hit save, it saves, and then you can read it back later. All my code is available on GitHub. The link will be in the description. I hope you have enjoyed and learned something from this video.